Good morning, and welcome to part three of the cabinet build on the air o ear aircraft radio. I have a big dilemma here that I completely overlooked. See if you can figure it out. I like the way the case came out. It came out better than I thought. But let me show you something here. I just laid the top on. You can see where the cleats are. And of course, it's going to be clamped and everything. As I said, the radio is going to slide out the back. Well, that's all well and good, but there is a big problem. Look at the left and the right hand top cleats. The radio will not slide out unless I notch out the front panel corners. And of course, as I said on part two, putting a cleat across the rear of the top will not be possible because looking at that front panel, the radio is only going to come out so far and you're not going to be able to get it out. So pulling the radio out, you cannot tip it up. You've got the loop coil here, the loop stick. So you can only lift the radio just a little bit, but not enough to pull it out. To see what happens, it's pulling my top right with it. Okay, so, unfortunately, and believe me, I've thought of this, <clears throat> after I made part two, and I was thinking, wait a minute here. I got these two cleats clamped down, and I thought to myself, how the hell am I going to get the radio out if I glue this down? I was almost ready to glue this down yesterday, not with the radio in it, and clamp it. Although, the only reason I didn't is because I had those two little clamps holding this down now that it's dry. So I went out to the shop after I made part two, after while it was rendering, and I realized I got to do something. So the only thing I can do is to notch this out and notch this out. So that the radio will slide completely out. So when you pull it, um, you can see as I'm pulling it out, that cleat is in the way. So I have to notch this out. And this one's going to be a SOB because this coil, I think, is held in with a nut and, and a bolt. And... Uh, that's going to be hard for me to get my little saw in there. So I'm going to have to saw um, a half inch by half inch square notch here and here in the front panel. I'm going to have to do that or this project is dead in the water. Yes, I'm going to have to take a notch out of here and a notch out of here. All right. which means the cleat of this type of material will not cover up that notch. So I'm gonna to have to get creative and take a piece of Luan or something similar and come out like this. Maybe a half moon here and a half moon here. The problem's gonna be this. I'm awful close to this. Now, I'm lucky in a way that this, I'm not forcing this side over. This is square. It's just the radio isn't. Or if it is out a little bit, it's very little. And this top fits perfectly. It's flushed out here perfectly. It's flushed out here perfectly. 
So when I glue this, I'll put clamps on it and it'll hold right in. You still got that little space and that space is going to help me. So I won't have to cut as big of a notch in this. I won't have to cut a full half inch wide notch. But I do have to cut down a half inch from here down. But maybe only a maybe only a quarter. So I think we'll be okay. I really don't like sawing on the plastic. I got to do it with the radio and everything else in there, and I don't know how tough this plastic is to saw. I've got one of them little tiny hacksaw uh, things, or little tiny saws that have very fine teeth on them. So I'm going to have to do that. And then once I do that, then I can glue and clamp this on into where it's supposed to be. And then after that, gluing on here, but not here, to cover up the notches and the space here. So we'll have to be glued on to the sides here. Because you can't glue anything to cover up the notch on here for obvious reasons you're going to hit this pulling it out <laughs> and you've accomplished nothing so the material will have to be glued to the sides and it will sit flush with this so when this radio is slid out like that the trim will still be on here so it'll be sticking out a little bit so I think we can I think we can deal with that so I wanted to show you that you know when you build things sometimes things are overlooked and that happens a lot with me when I'm building things so that's what I'm gonna have to do I did a little sanding on this try to get some of this off I'm raising a dust storm in the shop here and everything. I don't want stuff covered with dust here. But it's still a little chilly out there this morning, so I can't go out there yet. But you're not going to really see this anyways. And um, I sanded this a little bit with the 220 grit. What I think I'll do, as I probably mentioned, I will paint this part black where the plywood is and put a black band here, these nails. Um, somebody had mentioned about finishing a nails and countersink them, you know, didn't know if I was aware of that. Oh yes, I did that, did that many times, but these tiny little brads, they're brads, they got heads on them, they're not finished nails. I don't have any, I probably have finished nails, but I don't know where they are right now, but they're so small that I wouldn't, what will happen is I try to put the, uh, the prick punch in the little dimple that's in the head of a finishing nail and I always miss and hit the wood so I made a second hole in the wood. No. So we use the flat heads and um, it's not bad. You probably can't see that. I'm not going to get the SR-12, I'll just do this job here. Otherwise, I'll have a 10 gig file here. So I used, um, they're probably about three quarter inch long, um, little brads, and you can hardly notice them. Um, if I had to do this over again, um, I would have made the case like this, the only difference is I would not have glued these sides, but I would have used two screws and have the whole cover. In other words, the back would be permanently attached. Well, here's the back over here. The back would be permanently attached, and the whole cabinet 
top sides and back would lift right off and I would have two screws here, two screws on the other side. I didn't want to do that. I was originally going to do that and definitely would have done it if I had known this problem having to cut out these notches. <clears throat> I didn't want it because uh, screws would show, but it's not a big deal. The other option I had thought of too is since I've already done it this way and nailed and glued these, is to have the screws here and have the top removable so that you can slide the radio out. I am not doing that. I want this, there's nothing worse than having it loose like this, you know, it just looks crappy. I want it glued tight. And that's the way it's going to be. So the only other thing you can do is to cut a little notch here and cut a little notch there and slide the radio out. Uh-oh, what the heck was that? Um... I gotta get my magnifying glass. I think this loop stick is held in. I think there's a nut underneath there. I'm not sure. There might not be. I'll, I'll look it off camera. If there's no nut, I can take that off, but I don't wanna break any wires because uh, they, get, they break off inside here. I can't work with that stuff. It's too small. Um, because I can't get my saw in there without hitting this. So I gotta remove they get the uh, loop stick out of the way somehow and just hope that I don't break anything. I don't want to break anything. Especially the dial cord, but I don't think that's going to be in the way. All right, enough of this. These videos are getting too long here. I'll be back and we'll decide what we're going to do about this. Don't go away. Okay, this is the saw I'm talking about here. Um, I moved the, the loop stick just turned. There is no nut on the bottom, it's just a little loose. So if I got that out of the way, and I think if I cut right on this groove here, right here, and then a half inch down here. Well, this is the problem, I will have to take it off of there but it's gonna be hanging on the wires. I'll do all this off camera. This one I gotta cut like that, and probably this one the same way. And um, that's the only solution. I don't really like to, it's hard because I'm not gonna, it's not gonna be very strong. It's gonna move, and I don't wanna break it. I don't know how this plastic is. But we'll do that off camera, and we'll come back. Well, I was wondering what that um, noise was when I turned it on the bench. Uh, the right side plastic broke. On the left, as I showed you, or tried to show you, you can see that that was missing when I got the radio. But on this side, This is must this must be what snapped off. That's pretty crappy here anyway, so well this is what we got left. And this is why I made this here. Okay? To cover up that ugliness on the bottom here. To cover up this. So I guess we could even it out by getting this out. I could glue it, probably. I only have the Duco cement, but that should work. But what's the point of it? It'll be even. It'll be even Steven. Anyways, this is not going to be easy to cut. My blade is dull. I have no idea where I put the rest of them. The only thing, only part that cuts good is way up here and a little bit here. So I tried cutting a little here. Didn't get too far. 
I need to cut down about a half inch. I'm only cutting a quarter inch off because uh, as I showed you, it'll clear. Then I need to cut down about a half inch and this is gonna be right in the way. So, I don't like them taking that off because I'm gonna lose the wire even though I take pictures of it. With my bad eyesight, I'm not gonna be able to get them back on if they go down into here. So, if I take a dykes and try to cut it, I'm gonna split the plastic, you know? I don't know about a soldering iron. I could try that and see if I can melt it out of there. That might be a safer option. I guess I could try it on a corner. You're not gonna see it that much and see how well that works. But anyways, I gotta do all this off camera. This side is not gonna be a problem. Uh, well, it will be with this saw because uh, it's just dull. And I can't go out and buy anything right now. So we're gonna try to get this project done. We have a pretty good day. I thought it was gonna rain today, but uh, it's supposed to be good today. Um, so we're trying to finish part three. But I, I promise part three there isn't going to be a part four, so part three becomes an hour or an hour and a half. That's what it's going to end up as. That's why I do WBGA, as I said so many times. All right, let me get back on this. Don't go away. Well, I didn't want to do this, but uh, that's the only way. that I'm going to get this to clear. Now I had to cut this side more and I only did it a little bit, but um, you can see that um, it looks to me like I gotta cut it even more down. I gotta cut that down more. But that side, I hope you can see that. Yeah, that side clears. This don't, so I gotta pile this some more. I gotta bring this down more. And it's just the hardest part to work because of that loop stick there. I can only move it out a little bit, you know? I'm not taking that off because I'm gonna break the wires. Okay, I took a little more down, a little lower here. That side, I think, may be okay. If not, I'll have to file that down. I um, I took off that plastic as it was broken anyways. I just pulled the knob off so I can get the plastic out of there. So it's even with this side here. There's not much I can do about it. At least you can see the word uh, tune in there. So let's uh, let's see if she'll fit in the case. I'm not sure what I'm going to do to put into this area here, as well as in here. Probably nothing, and it would have to be done right in these areas here. And I want to do some more sanding on this before I actually put the radio in, and then. <clears throat> I want to put the top on and glue it and then uh, make the back. So because I have to wait for the glue to dry, the back may be made at another day, but it will be added to this video because there will not be a part four. Okay, it slides perfectly. And that the loop stick is is very close to that, uh, but it cleared obviously. So I think I can safely glue this top down. 
I'll tell you, it wasn't easy filing out this. It made a plastic dust all over everything, especially in here. But I blew it out as much as I could. So let me, uh, I'm going to probably hit the file a little bit on this side to get it down a little bit. I want to point out one thing um, about this uh, pilot light here. This is an NE51 bulb. It does work. It runs off 100,000 ohm resistor, 120 volts. But it does nothing on the dial. You don't see any light on the dial whatsoever. I gotta fix this. Got some Duco cement on that, so. I gotta glue the top anyway, so I'll do that. This side here is staying down good. Um, I wanna get some dial light in here, but there's no way There's no way I can do that. Um, other than change that bulb on the top to a 47, <clears throat> but uh, how am I gonna power it? I don't wanna go into the rectifier and mess around with that. Matter of fact, it uses uh, diodes. So let me glue this thing before I forget it and clamp it down. I think Duco Smith probably would hold that, I hope. All right, and then I'm going to get the top glued on. But before I do that, this is just barely clearing, so I'm going to file this down just a little bit more. I'm going to have to get a... Um, i got to get a, a file uh, brush. Uh, yeah, a file brush. Because... Uh, files filling up and it's very hard to clean I so I'm gonna work on this and I'll be back all right I got this all clamped down here and uh, held together so that's all I can do today I'm gonna be making the back but uh, that probably will be tomorrow, or whenever the weather, if it stays good tomorrow, if it doesn't, then whenever. But it'll be added to this part here, even if it's a week later. So um, we gotta let that dry good. And then we gotta, we did get a little bit of glue squeezing out. I wiped it off of my finger as much as I could. I think we're looking good here. So, we'll let that dry. And then we'll work on the back. And I may want to put a block in here and a little block in here, but I don't know how far in I can go. So I'll have to do that when I get the radio back into the case here so that I can put something in here and here. And uh, I've got the Duco cement holding this. Uh, piece of metal down so those little pieces I said on the left and right hand side they got to fill in this area and this area um, so that you don't have a void in there looking at it from the front okay we'll continue on this video don't go away Okay, it's now the next day, and I brought this in from outside, so it had plenty of time to set up. I didn't want to take the clamps off yesterday when I had this outside, uh, even though it was clamped for about three hours. I didn't want to take a chance uh, to have this pop open. I don't think it would. So we're going to take the clamps off of this now, and then... I gotta try to find some little trim to go in on the sides in the front, and I'll show you that. Okay, I think it uh, came out really good. Got a little bit of sanding there. 
This is the back. Here's the recessed of the corners to accommodate the back. And like I say, I would like to have had a cleat going right across here, but that would be impossible. The radio would be always in the case and never be able to be removed. On the front, you can see where I recessed them back there. Now, on the front, in this area and in here, I wanted to put some kind of a trim in there. I cut a small piece of this here. I have about two, two and a half feet of this left. And I'm thinking of maybe putting it like that and then just filing that off. I only cut one piece because uh, I just want to see how it'll fit like that. Um, but I would like to have it square. The stock here is too big. This is half inch. So this has got to be uh, less than half inch. This looks like three eighths. Not a big deal if I could find it. I can run down the Home Depot and get it. It's only a couple bucks. That won't break my bank. <laughs> All right, let me put the radio in. Now, as I showed you, I had to notch out the corners here and here. It was the only way I can get the radio in. So let me uh, get you on a tripod. All right. I hope you can see this. Very hard. I just don't have a good camera set up in my shop at all. Okay, as you can see, I hope you can anyways. I'm trying to do this so you can see it. Now, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to get this so I can see it. Right. Now, I'll get you over here. It's a little tight and I... should very carefully. Okay, as you can see, I'll turn you around here. It's not a very pretty sight having to do this, but there's plenty of clearance in here. I'm moving it around so hopefully we'll be able to see that good. Okay, so now, let me stop the recording here. I figured I'd try to drop this little block in here. Uh, but the problem is, it's, I wanted it to be square, so I may go to Home Depot and see if I can get something that's square in there to fit. Same as here. I'd have to take out the radio in order to do that. Now, I've got plenty of clearance on this side. I don't know why it was giving me such trouble going in. I guess it was dragging on here. But oh, well, there's plenty of side-to-side -side movement there. So a lot of it's dragging on this plastic here. As you're pushing this, you know, this plastic here is dragging along on here. But what I need to do is put a block in here. That's what I want to do right there. Now let me push that up forward. All right. That seems to be fine. I cut this um, about three quarters, almost an inch, a little over three quarters long. Now I can be glued in there because there's no plastic. If there was plastic in there, which it isn't, it broke out. And as I showed you, this one here came out, so I left it out. Uh, I wouldn't need anything in there because this plastic comes right up to the, right up to this. 
there's a little lip on the bottom of this plastic as I showed you and uh, the plastic is probably about a eighth of an inch of even that much away from this and the bottom of the plastic curls out like that but here I got a big space I can get my index finger in there and in here so that's what I want to do and I also want to make something that'll cover up this eye saw here of what I had to make and extend it down the length of this I took this piece out of here and just stuck it in here for sizes it wedges right in against this so if I make a piece from here not down here because this is recessed leave this alone fill this in here have a piece coming up here all the way up and then have another piece coming across here to cover up this maybe a little decorative thing I could probably instead of using this I could probably cut some luon but it would have to be glued to here if it was this material this would definitely cover it up the problem is this fits in so tight it may cause a problem trying to get the radio back in because it's hitting this dial works good as you can see so that's what I got to deal with here and you can see there's room for the loop stick to come through and you can see from the back side the bottom of the front panel is right up against the sides and the top isn't so with the trim that'll correct that on both sides the so next step is I got the back all cut I did this off camera it's gonna fit like this right up here and just sitting on this there's a little a little play and I got to cut out I got a drill for this because this screw here and this screw here normally held the radio into the plastic cabinet which is all broken up and long gone so I gotta drill those two holes notch out for the cord and cut out for this this is for earphones and this is for a tuner output well I'm never going to use that so I'm not even going to um, do that at all I'm not going to uh, cut out that no more than I'm going to use phones it takes the quarter inch phone plug anyways I'm not even going to worry about earphones so I'll drill a hole for that Phillips screw which will hold the back to the chassis when I need to remove the radio we take the back off and there is no mounting underneath places to screw the radio in on the bottom apparently these were the only thing holding the radio in your back will come down here will be a, a slot cut out here for the cord as you know on this one here I hardwired a cord it originally had the two prongs for a cheetah cord uh, but uh, this is a polarized cord and plug and we're neutral is connected to the chassis and the hot is to the switch so um, we're just going to have a, a cutout in there so that the back will fit down I thought of maybe having a little L bracket screwed in here and just keep the chassis from sliding out because you don't want the whole radio to come sliding out of the case when you're carrying it or setting it up on a shelf on a shelf 
I don't have any room in the house. <laughs> um, or maybe something in the corner here. I just hate to just take and drive a screw in the corner like this and this and call that holding the chassis in. It's kind of a crappy way to do things. I'll figure something out anyways. I'm wasting a lot of time on this and no matter how long this video is there will not be a part four. This will be it even if it's two or three hours long. <laughs> oh I hope not. But this is part three and there will not be a part four. So what I got to do next is cut out, make a template. I'll do that off camera. Make a template and get this cut out, get this cut out, and these holes drilled. I'm not going to worry about these two. Earphones, I don't have any quarter inch headphones that have a quarter inch plug on them, and I never use headphones anyways, very rarely, and I certainly don't have a use for the tuner output. But these holes can be drilled later on in the back if I need to. But, okay, this part three is going to be very long on this. All right, I also got a little problem and put the flashlight down so I can hold the camera uh, this thing's ready to fall right out it's dirty behind it um, I think it slides in underneath here but I do need the protective I gotta have that in there so let's get the radio in the case here. We'll worry about the rest of the radio later. I think the shaft is bent a little bit, but I'm not going to try to straighten it out because you can snap them right off. See how that little how it goes up and down? It's hitting something. It's got to be hitting this. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to cut this here and cut this here. because it's, as long as it protects this, and maybe I can wedge something in here and over here, it would have to be black so you don't see it, so that I can fasten this down to it and then it won't hit this, because I know it's not hitting the wood. Uh, it's away from the wood. Yeah. It's hitting that. See that? I pushed the radio back. It's hitting this. I'll tell you, it's a lousy design. I guess the original plastic cabinet must have had a groove or something that this thing dropped down into. But this is the way I got it, so I hate to have to take this front off because you got two little screws down here that holds this on the bracket, and then you got a support bracket in the back, and you got on side of the speaker wires. And uh, I think you have to take the knobs off too. Then I can slide this thing out because I think it slides into a groove there. I got to make this secure. I can't have this thing like this. It'll support in here. Fine, you know. And as you can see here. It's ugly up there in the corners. There's not much I can do. This is what I bought at Home Depot today. It's uh, smaller than the stock that I used up here. That's half inch. I think this is quarter inch. And I'm figuring that should fit nicely in there. Of course, I got to cut it and fit it in there. But what I'm going to do first is I got to I got to do something with this because when I push this radio in, it's dragging and making all kinds of noise going in and out of the cabinet, and it's gonna it's gonna break off. This thing's gonna break off, and then I'm gonna have no dial. I got to clean inside here. Uh, it's a little dirty. I sure wish I can get some dial light on here because I just can't see this dial at all unless I put a flashlight on it. All right, this is, uh, the dial glass slid right out. I thought for a minute the dial cord was riding on this. It says, oh, no. But no, the dial cord is riding down here. It was just hooked a little bit on the pointer. So no problem. I just had to pull one of the knobs off. And what I'm going to do is to just cut this where I marked it. 
because this ragged edge on each one of these here serves no purpose but making it look ugly as the best I can do. Um, and then I'll clean it with some Windex because all your numbers are on here so I'll just be gentle with this. That's pretty crappy but I cut it. It wasn't easy. It was very brittle plastic and they had to use that little saw there with the dull blade to cut it. So, uh, well, it's still dirty. It's got scratches and cracks, uh, a little crack down there and so forth. Um, I gotta get it back in there. But you can see now it clears both the knobs. Uh, and it rests on these things here. This keeps it from hitting the, uh, the pointer. All right. So, I think what we're going to do is I'm going to see if I can glue that down somehow onto here. That's going to be hard because when I slide it out of the cabinet, it's going to have a tendency to pull it like this. So, it might not stay in. I could put some glue in here, but I really don't want to do that because it would, could run down and jam up the dial cord and really screw up the things. It's really bad. Um, I think the shaft might be bent. There's no way. If it is, there's no way I am going to try to straighten it because you'll snap them things off. It don't look good here. And the only thing I can do is probably put some tape, a black electrical tape on each side, kind of like a make a border. But I got to do something now on this. So I'm going to work on this. It's taken away from the project here, but you can see it's just about done. And the only thing I got to do is do the back. So we're going to stop recording now. It's, it's going to rain any time now, so I can't work outside today. So probably next week sometime um, I'll get the rest of this video done. Of course, now you obviously are seeing it. It's going to be a long part three. That I can't help. All right, here it is, the next, uh, another day here. Last night I drew out, uh, today is Monday, by the way, Monday morning. Um, I drew out the, um, the necessary cutouts, but I'm not, as I said earlier, I'm not going to drill out these holes, but they're marked. This is the screw that's in that insulator. That's going to be used to hold uh, the back on. Got one here and you got one here. We're going to cut for the cord here and we're going to cut out this square here for this. Um, if in the future I was going to use these jacks, this is the tuner output and this is the headphone jack. Chances of me using either one of those is zero. So, um, that's how she looks. All right. Um, I put in a, a little cleat here and a little cleat here of some of that uh, thin wood. The radio is not fastened in. It's sliding out, as you can see. Um, up in the corners, my fingers are in the way. I'm sorry. Can't hold the radio and do that, too. Um I got to put something in each corner over there. I'm thinking of just cutting a little piece of wood and gluing it to the side here and the top. I got to remember not to glue it to the face of the radio or you're not going to be able to get the radio out. And uh, just curve the bottom a little bit. That's something I'll be doing, of course, off camera as I always do. You can see how it fits up into here pretty good. Um... <clears throat> And everything works good, the dial. Am I in camera? I can't, okay, yeah, dial works fine. Again, uh, no way I can get a dial light to work in that, so I gave that pro uh, idea up. Um, <clears throat> the next step is to cut out the openings this was the top, but uh, it didn't come out too good, so I recut another one for the top. So this is the back now. 
and uh, I gotta cut these out, and then I gotta make ventilation holes. I'll do all that, and then we'll come back. The part three here is we're taking way too long, so uh, we're not gonna cut these out on camera. We're gonna do this off camera. You've seen me drill out holes and stuff like that before, and we're just not gonna make a video of it. It's getting too long, and I, I'm gonna have to really do a lot of editing to cut this thing down. All right, so when we get the back done, we'll be back on the video. All right. I tried cutting out a little piece here. And um, I'm going to try to hold that up here. Uh, I'm not going to do a John from Arkansas. Hi, John. I'm going to sit you on a tripod. And I'm going to show you how it's going to go in there. All right, I got the radio tilt tipped up here a little bit. This is the piece here and it's going to fit like that. Sorry for my fingers, I cannot hold that in there. I'll try the screwdriver here. Alright. That really don't look too good. Uh, I got to do is a flatness out here a little bit. So let me get back to you in a minute. Okay. Hope you can see that. It covers up that hole. And I'll make a, a duplicate. We'll turn this over. Disregard that line that's in there because I'll make the second one uh, for this side here. Uh, so we'll just turn this over and that'll sit up there like that. Well, I guess it'll be all right. Okay, it's a little tedious. I got the uh, corner pieces glued in, so I got to let that set with the uh, tight bond here. And uh, they weren't too bad to cut out with my coping saw out of a little scrap piece here. So <clears throat> for strength, I'll shoot a little, after this hardens up, you know, dries, I'll shoot a little bit of glue in here and in the corner, way up just a little bit with the end of a, a Q-tip without the cotton. I'll just stick it in there just to brace it up uh, a little bit to make sure that these don't come out. And um, so there, this is flush with the outside of this, which is what I want. So when the radio comes up, these will hide the notches. Now I had to make them small because it comes right up against this plate. It's just about maybe uh, an eighth inch of even that away from this, but I need to cover that up. I wished I didn't have to cut this out like that because it spoils the looks of it. All right, so when this is done, and hardened up good. We'll let it sit for a few hours. I got pretty much most of the day. The car is in the garage and they're gonna give me a price on the blower motor. So uh, we'll see what happens. So anyways, when this is done, I'm gonna do some finished sanding. This is the bottom you're looking at, it's upside down. And then before I do the finished sanding, I wanna drill and countersink for a screw to go in here, and it'll come up to the back of the chassis, the rear apron, to keep the radio from sliding out, because there is no way to hold this radio in the cabinet with any screws underneath, because they don't have the little tabs coming out, because this radio went into a plastic case and was held in by those two Phillips screws, which are in the back of the chassis. So those two Phillips screws are going to hold this back in 
after I make these holes here and drill them out and everything else. And when the radio slides out, the entire back with the radio can come out or the back only can be removed in case you have to change a tube or something. I have a big problem here with a knob. This is why this part three is going to be so long. This did work good on a spline, but now it's all rounded off inside. It's all smooth, so the band switch knob just spins around. And unless I glue that in there, which means I'll never ever be able to take this front off, like if the speaker ever goes bad or, or I have to take this front panel off for any reason, and not going to be able to get this knob out. Now I'm going to try to put some masking tape in there and shove it on, but the band switch takes a little effort to turn. So I have a choice. I can put it on and let it just roll around on the shaft, leave it on the aircraft band, or glue it in. If I glue it in, it'll never be able to be taken off again. So I have no idea what to put in here without gluing it. Okay, so we're going to let this set. We'll let that set and um, we're not going to be in any rush. And we've been back. Well, yeah, I can't even talk this morning and I already had my coffee. <laughs> I'll be back. No, I'll be back. Okay, it was a little hairy cutting that out, uh, but I got it. And um, I had to relocate the uh, scramblers I measured. I had to relocate that screw right there because it didn't fit in, uh, wasn't lined up right. That's the story of my life anyways. Um, I got to cut out the holes here. I'm going to do that off camera too. But uh, the back fits good now. Um, as I mentioned, I'm not going to cut out for the tuner, which is here, and the earphone, which is here, but it is marked off on the inside in case I want to drill them out in the future. So now the thing I want to do now is I want to make some holes in here, and I'll probably use make one-inch holes like I did in the other one. That's the smallest hole saw I have other than those uh, flat bits with the sharp point on them. I have smaller ones, but they're buried way in the back and I'd have to pull three quarters of the stuff out of the shed to get them. So uh, I think one inch holes will be fine. I don't need probably all that many of them. Um, originally this radio did not have any ventilation in the plastic case as far as I know. Uh, lucky Larry would be able to tell me that. I don't think there's any ventilation in the plastic case at all. Um, being that mine was broken, only half of it was there, I really don't know. But I think if I make a row of one-inch holes just across here, that should be more than enough. And this here, top, is about an eighth inch away from the top of the cabinet. It's not the way I wanted it but I had to bring it down so it hits flush to the bottom, otherwise he's, um, I'd be drilling right on the very edge of the plywood and definitely split it out. Um, you know, it wouldn't hold very good. So I want this to be sitting flat on the platform just like it, you know, it would be when the radio's in the case. All right, so I'm gonna drill these holes and then I'm not going to uh, make this part three any longer than it is now. So I'm going to drill out these holes, put this radio in the case, and show you what it looks like. And as far as the finishing off, the sanding and the staining, whatever I'm going to do, it'll be completely separate if you want to see that. It's not going to go beyond part uh, three because I have to go out and buy some. I can't buy any right now. So um, I don't have any more. Um, I'm all out of this stuff here that I used in the back of the Phillips. So I only got a tiny bit in there, but not enough to do this. So I'm thinking of maybe staining it 
and then use polyurethane over it. I don't know. I'll see how much that stuff is. It'll be a while. Okay, so we'll come back on this video when I get the holes drilled and when this is back in the case, and that will end part number three, the final of this radio. Okay, there it is. Now I gotta finish sanding and everything. So let me show you the back. I think it came out pretty good. Like I say, I did not drill out the holes for the tuner or the earphone, but I can at the mark so in the back. Uh be a little awkward getting the screws, but I can enlarge that if I have to. The only thing is, um, this is screwed with those two Phillips screws that go into the insulation there when a normal pl plastic cabinet, this would ha this is what held the plastic cabinet on. Um, the only thing is, I have to somehow, I have to take this off and put a screw Underneath the cabinet, underneath the uh, the bottom, and have it come up. Oh, we'll just pull this out here. Have it come up and catch the back end, probably in the middle somewhere, so it sticks up. Well, on the back, but I can't show you there because I got the back on. Uh, the screw would come up like this, so it would prevent this cabinet from coming out the chassis from coming out because this is what's been happening here part of that I think is from this it's it's wedged right up in there I measured as close as I could so I need to put a screw in there to keep that back so that it keeps the back of the the back on the radio flush with the sides so that's it folks that ends part three. I got a lot of editing to do. So it'll be a while before this video comes out. Thanks for watching. I'll stain this and polyurethane it, but that will be done in the future. Right now, this concludes the Aero Ear part number three. Thank you for watching.